soon as you try to close your hands, you start reading in your brain, in your mind, Allahu la ilaha illa wa al-halqa yumayat al-kursi, until your tongue is released, and you continue reciting on loud voice, and holding your hands and reciting, reciting, until it's dead. What are the verses to be read over water for Ayn, Jinn, Sihr related issues? So these verses for Ayn, Jinn and Sihr, uh, we use them all together. We don't make a difference because we prefer to make it all under water. So it will be multi-purpose water. It is these papers here uh, that I am expecting to be, to be photocopied and given to everybody present here. What are the signs and symptoms of Ayn, Jinn and Sihir within the body? So I think we have talked about that uh, sufficiently. Do you do Rokia in London? Yes, we do Rokia in our new Marquez uh, center of, of uh, Rokia, which is in East Ham, 133 Market Street. If yes, it is possible to know where place, where it is and get any number to contact you. What well, the, the leaflets are going to be given if you don't have it. Does a woman can practice Sorokia? Yes, a woman can practice Sorokia. And we treat, uh, we train women, and some women uh, just do the hijama, only do the, the cupping, and we need women to do the cupping, and they also do the explanation of, uh, of Rokia, of the uh, treatment to the patients, and etc. And some go further on and do everything, read the Rokia, and do the diagnostic and everything, no problem. And some women also are gene catchers, and some can pilot the gene catchers so they can read and bring the genes and discuss with the genes to make them embrace Islam. So women can do everything, no problem. Uh, women can do everything, but some women just do the hijama, and uh, we need those who just do the hijab. I wanted to tell you about this, uh, this ta'weez a lady gave me yesterday uh, uh, in the mosque after uh, the lecture. And uh, what is it? So it is all these squares, and you have Allah, Jibreel, Allah, Muhammad, Israfil, and you have Ali, and you have Ya Hafiz, and you have Uthman, Allah, Muhammad, Ar Rahman. Rahman, Muhammad, and you have Ya Badduh. Ya Badduh, Ya Badduh. You know Badduh? No one knows Badduh. So Badduh is a jinn. Mm. Badduh is a jinn. You see, you have all those names of Allah and Muhammad and Abu Bakr and Jibreel and Azrael and all that stuff. And you have Ya Badduh. But there's a funny, a funny thing about it. When you have Allah, you don't have Ya Allah. Rahman, you don't have Ya Rahman. You only have Ya Badduh and Ya Hafid. Only Hafid and Badduh have Ya. You see? And that's quite surprising because you write Allah but you don't say Ya Allah. And you write Muhammad or you don't need to say Ya Muhammad and all that. But it's only Badduh that you say Ya Badduh and Hafid. That you say Ya Hafid. Well, Hafid is protector. It is the name of Allah. But others also have the name of Hafid, and we met many jinns that are called Hafid, and we know the jinns called Badduh. So you see how this shirk and kufr, evidence, huh? it is evident. And once we had a square like this, it was plenty of names of Allah and Sahaba and uh, angels, but in the middle there is one name different that was not name of any angel of any Sahabi, not name of Allah. And we got the jinn that had that name, and I asked, what does this mean? He told me that means that he is over all those ones. You see? So this is to show you how this thing is kufr. Kufr and shirk and bringing jeans, etc. May Allah Ta'ala prevent us. Okay, I think I have finished. So is there any more questions? Yes? No, no, no. I don't have a center in Bangladesh. Well, I have someone, I have a center in uh, uh, Australia, and my guy in Australia, he went to um, Indonesia, and he established a center there. So, that's all I have. No center in India, no center in Pakistan, no center in Bangladesh. And this is the first time we come in London. So, most of the time, I've been working in French-speaking communities. It is the first, uh, no, it's not the first time I've been to Nigeria as an English speaking community. I've also been to Gambia, and it is the first time in England. And Alhamdulillah, we're hoping that uh, through here 
we will reach uh, many more places in the world. Uh, yes? Well, if someone has difficulty praying Salah and worshipping, well, when someone has sihr and jinns and I, it will weaken him, weaken his, uh, his will. Uh, yeah, it is lack of Iman. Because even if someone, for example, yesterday, I had a patient and uh, she was feeling like boiling, but she was controlling herself. Uh, and I was explaining, she was with her husband, that that, that is the kind of sihr they make and they put it to boil. And the person starts boiling, boiling until he explodes. And I said, really, your wife is controlling herself, otherwise she would be breaking, breaking uh, plates and breaking, breaking things. She, she, it's not so, it is something that you can't just stay still with it, but she's really controlling herself. And uh, he, she, she said, yes, I, I want to break, I want to break plates and break uh, glasses, but I'm controlling myself. So that is to show you that people react differently. Uh, I mean, the same sihr will affect more other people because they can't control themselves and they're not used to control themselves and they're used to do what they want, you see, and they don't have that much fear of Allah wa ta'ala, so it will affect them differently. So if someone is not praying, he's partly responsible, that's for sure, because another one will be praying and suffering, but struggling to pray, and another one just stop praying, he said, no, this is too difficult, but he's not that much interested in praying himself already. So there's a part of the person and the jinn also will, will push the person to leave prayer and I bet. Yes? Uh, when you have a recurring drive at past, uh, things like um, uh, you're uh, either driving a motor vehicle or something and you're trying to stop it and the brake seems to fail and it seems to come back every now and then. You see it uh, maybe once a month or mm. like you're driving a motor car or something and you're and you're, you're colliding, you're going to crash with somebody, but you're starting to hit the brake and the brake doesn't never works. Yeah. It, it seems like a repeating dream. Yeah. Repeating dream of cars and accidents and brakes not working. Uh, dangerous situation. That means they have they did see it with your footsteps. When they do see it to you, most of the time you get a dream on spot. They don't see it to you. Next time you sleep, you see that because it is a uh, it is a. A spiritual attack and when you go to sleep you see that thing attacking you then if they do the sihr again and again and again you'll be every time seeing that dream again or similar dreams and if they don't do it again you might not see that dream anymore and you might see that dream from time to time again you see and sometimes the sihr is made and is renewed for example for example someone can take your birth date and every time it is your birthday, who do say it to you? That will be your present uh, for uh, every year. I mean, they can take uh, every time the new moon will come, they will do say it. It is possible. He can pay a sorcerer for do it for 10 times every new moon or something like that. So every so and then it will come back again. Uh, yes? Sheikh, what about uh, if you don't see any dreams? And uh, also, is it possible to. You know that someone gave you sihr mm -hmm. or does sihr on you. Can you trigger that in your subconscious back? Because I used the Yemeni shake, and one time they gave me a thing, I can't remember called, I looked it up, and it almost makes you feel like you're dying. It does give you the diarrhea and stuff like that. Haram, you know, haram, haram. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he said, if you see somebody in your dream, it could be the person that gave you the uh, yeah, if you see someone in the dream, it could be the person that made you see her. Now, it could also not be. Uh, but uh, and the person who is making see her to you can come in your dream in the shape of someone else. So whatever the person you see in the dream, you must kill him in the dream. And I would advise you not to bring the sihr, the spiritual or mystic problems into real life. If you do see the person making sihr in your dream, don't go shouting, you did say it to me, this and that. Just kill him in your dream and let things go. And don't say anything to anyone. Because you can't be sure anyway and you can't prove it. So if you say it, you are making a sin. The person I saw, it was impossible. Yes, that, I mean, yes. Mm. You know, if someone reads a senna and um, they feel sick and start having bad headaches at that time, what does that mean? You drank senna, you got sick, and, and you're having bad headaches. headaches. That means. 
That means the sihr and jinns related to the sihr you have eaten. It has either the sihr has gone into your body or the way to your brain, or the sihr that is related to that sihr, the jinn that is related to that sihr has gone into your brain. And when you're removing the sana, it is dragging him out, and that is giving you the pains in your head. So you must just continue the sana. Also, try to make hijama for your head and wash uh, again and again your head to treat both sides. Yes. Um, you know, we hear of certain practices back home, for example, and people they seek help um, sometimes through Islamic means, sometimes through people who are not even Muslims, but they are able to identify the sihr and treat it. Is that is that uh, valid? Is that a valid treatment? And are they actually cured from from those if they go through those methods? Okay, so um, I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to give you an example. I met a traditional healer in Africa, and he was married with a Jinnia, and he lived in marriage with her for 20 years, and he was curing people. And his story started that he was a normal guy, and he started dreaming of a woman that coming closer and closer to him in his dreams. And they went to see a woman that was a seer, and uh, she told him that this uh, girl, this Jinnia wants to marry you, and these Jinn people, it's a Jinn community, they want to marry you with her, uh, with their daughter and this and that. So you must uh, make a celebration and you must give her mahar and you must uh, kill some sheep and everything and do a proper marriage. So he did it all because those people, they think that if you have a Jinnia, if you have an alliance uh, uh, related to jinns, that is uh, being very rich and very powerful. Oh, it's like, mashallah, having a U.S. passport or I don't know what. Uh, so, <laughs> so what's that? that's what they did. And he would be living in daytime with humans and when the night, when he falls asleep, he would go in the jinn's world, he would be married with her and then he got to know his in-laws and, uh, and they'd take him around in their world and he learned how to fly with them and to fight with them and to all that. And then he started having children with her and then they start teaching him uh, to see things, to see through uh, stones. A chorus, I don't know if you know, there's this kind of uh, stones like a beach, uh, how do you say? Coral. Chorus, yeah, chorus. They, uh, they, they throw them, they come in his dream and uh, they throw, they say, they say, look, I'm not seeing anything. He said, look, that one is bent, that one is going that way, that one's like that, that one's on. That means his things are not working, that means there's this and that, and ah, and he starts understanding it. And he starts reading, so now he can, anybody comes, he will, he will throw those stones and he will understand all the problems of the person. Uh, and then people come and he understands their problems and they give him the treatment in the dream. They say, so that guy who came, he must take such herb and boil it with this and mix it with that and drink it such day and do it such matter. And he does it and it works. And it works and people get cured. And he gets his wage, his money, and Jesus asks for sacrifice in exchange of this uh, service they are doing, and it's working. So now it is ship. It, it is ship, uh, the sacrifice for jinn. It is also yani kahana, means uh, seeing uh, this thing. But the treatment in itself is halal. All the treatments are just natural products. It is just that in order to reach that treatment, you know the disease by seeing, and you get the treatment by chins, and they will give you that treatment uh, in exchange of, uh, of sacrifices that are shirk. So after 20 years doing that, so his Islamic uh, belief and he came back and he understood that all this is shirk and he left it all. And the jinns didn't want to leave him because it is a big business for them. Uh, but he fought them with Quran until they let him go and uh, that was it. So and by that time, now that he's out of all the shirk, he can diagnose the problems of people without using his uh, chorus because he understands. And you just have to say your problems, he will understand it and do a logical diagnostic like what we are doing. Uh, and uh, he can give you the treatment without asking genes because he's got 20 years of experience in that field, you see. So now the same, uh, so the same remedy can be used. The remedy in itself is halal. It is the way to reach it that is haram. Uh, so this is how you can get treatment by non-Muslim and it can work and you can and you can get cured but you will be making shirk. Most of the time you will be making shirk, the method is shirk. Now it could be that the knowledge is there and they are using the knowledge and there is no more shirk. That's what Rasulullah said.
to the people making Ruqya before Islam when he came to Medina and they said, you're making Ruqya, can we continue? He said, you can treat people, but don't do shirk. So all the methods you learned in Jahiliyyah, and that's how working, you can continue using the methods, but just don't do any shirk. Yeah. How about you forget the things a lot, and even you drink, you come out of your So if you, get, if you forget things a lot, and you forget even your dreams, so you just do treatment for that, and you make hijab on your head, and if there is a psychological issue to that, because when someone has been suffering too much, uh, that could lead to that situation too. Yes. Um, if the patient does come close to dress uh, or something and she doesn't want to touch it, and if she does touch it, the gin attacks her. Um, what's the reason for So, whenever the patient touches a cloth or something, the gin attacks her. Well, I think this is the first time I hear about such a situation. Uh, but I can't say. Well, I can't say. Maybe something. Not gin attacks.